Michael. Here. Otto. Here. Kaus. Crouch. Here. Florence. Gossett. Lemming. Maynard. Here. Mallory. Knuckles. Live in person. <laughs> Todd. Here. <laughs> here. So we just have enough for a form here tonight. Nobody's online at this time. As far as the number, from what I can tell. Okay, this first meeting of the year, uh, we do re election of uh, officers and appointments uh, at the beginning of the meeting. Um, and then we'll proceed with our business. But then the agenda, we really do not have a time slotted in there for discussion of solar. I realize there's a lot of people here anticipating that we will be discussing that. Um, I don't know if we will get to that or how heavily involved. I think once we go through our election process and see who's in charge, if there's any changes or whatever, then maybe make that person, let that person decide how much, if anything, we will entertain on solar. Because uh, our first duties is to election of officers. So hopefully in a few minutes after we get that taken care of, we can maybe come to some type of understanding of where we're going to go on solar discussion tonight. or so another meeting in the very near future that will be dedicated solely to that. <coughs> so first order of business for election of officers is election of a, of a president, then a vice president, also uh, filling in the executive committee, and then making appointments to BZA. So first up is an election, or our discussion for our president, uh, the APC. So according to the procedures, we're supposed to discuss about it, and then I would ask for nominations if we may want to nominate somebody to be president uh, of APC. So is there any discussion before we ask for nominations? Any discussion? I hear anything, and I will take uh, anybody who would like to nominate somebody for APC president. We need a leader. <coughs> Jerry, you got any ideas? Yeah, I said we're sleeping like it is. I nominate you. Well, thanks a lot. <laughs> Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, nominations are closed. I do believe we do need a vote for that. To call the roll. and the nominations for vice president. Any discussion for vice president? Excuse me, how many votes did you have? Six to one. I believe you need seven. And you've got to have a majority of the entire commission for any official action. All right. So then we have no president this time. Well, actually, well, no, it's a you remain. You remain. So then, be a until there's, if there's a tie, which this is yeah. not a tie, just kind of like a tie, until we can get a form or get a majority. I do remember reading that somewhere. So we have nobody online. Who's online there? Is there any council member on Commissioner Minimum? 
Okay, so since I'm remaining as the acting president or president going forward for this meeting, um, my thought is that we would have it as far as since we got a lot of solar people here. I'm not sure why they showed up. It's really not a highlighted item on the agenda. I don't know if we're really prepared to address a lot of those issues tonight. Um, do we want to entertain any discussion or postpone it to like to have it a, a, like another summit type meeting? Uh, possibly next <clears throat> Monday, Monday this facility is available, we can start at 6 instead of 7 to give us a little more time. We we'll, would not run that late in the evening. How much, how much time do we have to take care of our business? Uh, we got one public hearing, approval of all the minutes. Uh, we will not be an interesting notice of office, but Kyle may have some things. We got uh, one, two, three, three or four other things to discuss. Um, we could, maybe we could have that done more than a half an hour of total discussion time or something like that, but we're not here all night. You mean know, we're on the solar stuff or something, or? I, I mean, people the made people an effort. The people are here. Made an effort. We might be a little bit here. <coughs> dedicated amount of time to hear what the mission is. At the end of the court, at the end of the meeting, or near the end, we will slot in <coughs> appropriate amount of time, you know, how long this meeting runs, and then we'll try to cut it off like at night or something. All right. So we have several minutes to approve at November 15th meeting minutes, December 6th, and December 14th. Uh, some of those minutes came email. Some came within the packet. November 15th and December 14th, I do believe, were workshops that were held here. So they were just basically a lot of rundown of what was discussed. Through those meetings, December 6th meeting was an actual uh, APC meeting where we did business. I'll make the motion we set November 15th minute. Okay. November 15th minute meeting. Uh, motion to approve by Brett. Second. Byron seconds. Call the roll. 
Franco? Yes. Otto? Yes. Cal Crouch? Yes. Maynard? Yes. Knuckles? Yes. Todd? Yes. Brady? Yes. And December 6th is our regular APC meeting. Report information there. Petitioner will have 15 minutes to come up and uh, give us reasons why they would like that to happen, why they requested the change of the zoning. Then, if there's any opposition to that, uh, the opponents, so to speak, will have up to 25 minutes to present evidence, or statements, or arguments opposing the matter. And then there's time for rebuttal by the petitioner of 10 minutes uh, on that. At that time, or after that time, the hearing would be closed, and then the county, or they, we, then we would discuss the issue, and then take a vote. So, Ryan, can you briefly just go over what we're talking or discussing here for the security? Uh, so, first off, I apologize uh, for the APC staff report. You should have the corrective one in front of you. Uh, we had a, a mix up between saving on our G drive and, and my desk. Uh, so, so, so basically, uh, address is 300 North Barclay Street, uh, Fairmount, Indiana. Uh, this is the Fairmount Village Mobile Home Park. Uh, they had a new owner who was requesting uh, that we look to rezone part of the park. They have four parcels inside the park. Or no, they have one, two, three, four. They have six parcels inside of the park that are actually zoned R3. We're not clear why. Uh, they got zoned R3 inside of the mobile home park. Uh, as I noted in the APC report staff, our land use table does not allow mobile homes in R3, even though half of the mobile home park is an R3. So what they're asking is that we zone the entire mobile home park into mobile home zone. Okay. All right, so do we have somebody here petition who would drop the uh, ordinance or request that would come to the front here? Uh, now this gal is actually from what, Arizona? 
Are they online? They were potentially going to be oh. online. Hi, are you able to hear me? Yes, yes, all right. Welcome. Great, thank you. So basically, uh, right now, is, uh, you are basically here requesting for rezoning. Uh, we just basically needed to hear you say what you would like us to do, and then we consider that. Yes, and, and I'm having a hard time hearing you, but I can, I can hear you, I think, enough to, to, to understand. Um, it, it's, I'm the owner of the company we own. <clears throat> we own about 35 mobile home communities in, in many states in the Midwest. When we purchased this property back in 2018, it was zoned as MH, as mobile home, and somehow a portion of the community in the last year or two was, was rezoned to whatever that was. I believe it was residential. I'm trying to find the application right now. <clears throat> and, and I don't think that was not done by us. Um, so what we're requesting is it to, to rezone back to its original zoning of, of MH. All right, that's pretty straightforward, I think. Does anybody else here in support of this that would like to speak? Anybody in opposition? All right, well, I guess there's no need for rebuttal since there's no opposition. I'll close this hearing. The hearing is closed. So now it's among the uh, APC to discuss and make a. I think basically there must have been a snap somewhere along the line. Why well, there's six parcels out of however many is in that. Trailer park got labeled wrong somewhere along the line, and basically we just need to get it back into proper condition. Is this proper the only one we have trouble with right now? Or? No, no. no. We're, we'll talk about that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I think it's just a matter of housekeeping getting it back in the proper proper uh, zoning classification. I make the motion since we got a problem we need to correct. Fix. I'll make the motion with All right. We have a second. Second. All right. Second. Call the roll. Sprinkle? Yes. Cotton? Yes. Crouch? Yes. Maynard? Yeah. Knuckles? Yes. Todd? Yes. Green? Yes. Well, thank you and enjoy the nice weather out in Arizona. Is that where you're calling from? Yes, thank you very much. You you, you all made this very, uh, very easy to get this corrected and I appreciate that. And thanks for doing this right after the holiday as well. Well, thank you. Have a good night. Okay, take care. <laughs> all right, you got anything to report out? No, uh, just we briefly discussed the uh, oath of the <coughs> office. So next meeting, by law, each of you as an officer, before you begin your duties on the Airplane Planning Commission, should take a standard oath of office that you'll defend and protect the United States and Indiana constitutions. Um, there's actually a recent court case uh, I know Ryan's talking about those battling eligibility requirements. It's a statutory requirement that area claim commissioners do such investigation. We don't think that's ever happened. So next meeting we will have um, each of you. And at the beginning of a term, it would just happen at the beginning of each term that you would uh, take the oath. So uh, that a sample will be in your next packet for many of you on town board and elected office holders is the exact same oath that you take in that position as well. All right, we'll take care of that next meeting. Brian, want to give us some updates here? All right, uh, I'll start off with uh, the Dillon property update. Uh, the Dillons are here. Uh, we actually spoke to the Dillons uh, went out and looked at the property. Uh, for the most part, only minor minor issues. 
Uh, we've come up with a solution, and uh, we're expecting them to come back in February with a written agreement. Uh, kind of much like we had with the property across the street. Uh, we do have a small boutique there with retail sales and agricultural. Uh, but other than a, a couple of minor uh, fire extinguishers, smoke detectors, that's the sign sort of, sort of issue. Uh, I think we can correct it pretty simply. All right. So that sounds good. Good. So hopefully next next meeting we'll have a paperwork in front of us. I didn't you know if they wanted to. Make any comments? Would you like to make any comments? Or are you good? Get on the party if you want to move here. I'm up here. Skyway. issues. Uh, we have found out that they actually do have a new owner. Uh, they are going to look into uh, putting in a uh, yeah, commercial type substation for uh, the trailer park. We are to meet. They're coming, they're, they live out of state, but they are coming in state. We're meeting them on the calendar. They, I don't think they gave us a date yet. They said they were going to get back to with us after the new year. So an day. once they get into Indiana, they're going to call us and, and meet us with the health department, state health department out here, and, and walk through the plan as far as replacing that sewage and septic. <clears throat> so that's that's where we are there. Uh, rules and procedures uh, we have talked about going through and doing a review of that. I think is I, I'm asking you guys uh, as long as we've got solar in our in our Bailey Lake, uh, that we hold off on that. But John, uh, Kathmandu over in Jonesboro, uh, we had talked about, we had went out there uh, last month and we are still waiting at this point, we are still waiting for a phone call from the Empire. So for everything that the state talked to them about, everything that we've talked to them about, none of it happened. So uh, here we're looking for a little bit of guidance as far as uh, do we want to move forward, do we want to start code enforcement and work. This is, this is ongoing for five years now. We've got signs on the door. They've got a building, for those who are aware, just a, a real quick, they have a building they had a CDR for, CDR expired, building permits expired. Uh, we talked to them, they said until, until the current mayor of Jonesboro leaves, they're not touching the building. They are aware the public is not allowed in the building. And at this point, we have, or, or that owner is leasing the building to a motorcycle club. Uh, 
who is gathering in there and holding meetings in there. So we, we tried to talk to them. We thought we talked to the president of the Motor Circuit Club. They understood what needed to happen as far as the CDR or building permits to get the building acceptable for public. And we had received a phone call now in a month. Correct. Are they allowed to be in there for meetings? Nope. No. Okay. Nobody from the public is allowed to enter that building. It is only. And people aren't going to answer it. I don't know how fucked it is. People aren't going to answer it. I'm asking the board that we need to take action. Because he's dragged his feet before on this ground. Like I said, this is. Brian's this trying is. to do his work and he's dragging it. I think he needs to get right in. Well, if we know the people are in there when they're not supposed to be, basically an unsafe structure, basically, and if we're. We're turning our heads to it. That's wrong on our part. So, how do we proceed, uh, Ryan? Get a bow on the here a little bit. Some type of what do we need to do? Well, we need to take motions to get to you. I, I, you know, it's it's one of those things that, that we're dealing with. But I want to make you guys aware. I say so we, we make a motion to get. To move on to the next step. Yep. Okay, Rex makes a motion to uh, step up the action on that particular property. What would the next step be? We'd actually have to get a hold of Morris because we Morris. can't go through Kyle. Conflict of interest. Oh, Basically, what would happen is we're now at the point to where I can send them the warning letter, then the attorney letter. Because obviously, I sent them an initial letter to the motorcycle club basically stating that it's an illegal habitation. That's exactly what it is. It's illegal habitation. The building is considered unsafe, not supposed to be occupied by anybody from the public. The way that they were using it was a commercial storage. So now it's a legal habitation that I can actually go to court with the end result being demolishing that block. Well, that side. Not the whole block, just that side. Because it's not up to standard. Correct. Unless he comes back and has a. Legit plan. Yes. So that's what we're going for. Yeah, and again, the state, the state, and talked to him, and he was all about we're going to get this done. We'll have it, no problem. We'll get a hold of him, and now it's enough. And, 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 and this is the third time we've heard this same story. Give him two years, nothing happens. Give him time, nothing happens. And the state could put fines on it, but it doesn't sound like they want to. They don't want anything to do with that. They'd rather us deal with it with them. Yeah. So. Uh, so we still have a motion to get the more coordinated direction that, that uh, Ryan should be in. We should proceed with proper paperwork or action. I'll say it there. Okay. <coughs> Call the roll. Franco? Yes. Cotto? Yes. Crowd? Yes. Maynard? Yes. Knuckles? Yes. Todd? Yes. Reed? Yes. So, and, and to save some time tonight, uh, we had talked in the November meeting about fees and fines. Uh, I have worked on some of those updates. Uh, and then I will, we can hold off on that with what else we have to do tonight. Uh, another thing that, that is coming, we did discuss with the BZA as far as the unsafe building, uh, taking, taking appeals through them. Uh, we are agreeable to that. So again, once we can catch our breath, uh, we'll start moving that through the adoption process with the APC. To, to adopt these things. That's it. Like I said, I, I, these are things I'd like to talk about more, but we've got to do for people. Okay. Uh, the other thing I noted some of the paperwork uh, for new board members, uh, we've got uh, Brian Gossett out of Fairmount, Heath is here from Upland, uh, Jared Florence is our new council member. We need to try to get the paperwork uh, 
report that to our files for the official. So from their county, their town board president, they need to send a letter saying that they're, they are committed to this one. We need to have that one. <clears throat> uh, and, really, and the only other thing I had was question mark on solar Orleans workshop or public meeting. All right, so we basically completed our business of what's on hand. What time do we have here? 7.30, basically, 7.35. So we entertain listening to some solar questions and concerns. I make a motion here or something like that. I don't think we need a motion, motion but we can do that. Um, we, or at least I was not prepared to discuss or have any agenda items. Uh, I guess we could ask if you want to come up and state what, what you want to talk about. We can kind of explain where it may be at within the, the format of the drafts we have. Uh, we'll take notes, <coughs> for consideration, uh, as we formulate this ordinance, and go from there. Uh, and we'll just try to do the best we can to answer. Uh, but like I say, the process started back in, in the summer. It went through several meetings. Uh, there's three different summit meetings here, one with the county commissioners, twice with us now. Uh, I think we may anticipate doing another one to know how tonight goes. Um, the goal is to have a ordinance present to the county commissioners. Uh, I hate to say sooner than later because there are some time constraints that we as a county may want to try to avoid if that's if the state tries on their own since they just went back to the session they were to pass something and we don't have something when we live by their rules that's if they get it and pass it through so there is that possibility it hasn't happened yet uh, we may or may not like what they have as far as state guidelines that we would have to follow, so it may be better that we <coughs> have our own ordinance and guidelines to follow. <clears throat> so that's why we're here, uh, trying to get this formulated so that we can, so these are just, we're just trying to gather information, points of view, concerns. Uh, once we get it all into an ordinance, it will actually be published. We'll actually have another public hearing specifically for everything that's in that ordinance. And that will be held here because of the amount of people we expect. Since we have a limit of 25 people in the council chambers down the county building. Is it down to 10 now? I think we could even meet there at the group. So yes, so until, so that's why we're having these meetings here because we anticipate larger amounts of people. So we can go for a while, see how things go. So who would like to step up and speak first? Like I said, I don't have anything uh, specific that... All right, looks like we got our first volunteer. I'm just going to do it. All right. right. Please, uh, your name and... Your name is Jackie act. Sheets. Okay, what's that? Jackie Sheets. Jackie Sheets, okay. Okay. I was at a meeting this morning for Delaware County, and I'm just going to repeat myself what I did over there. And I'm going to play for you the sound that these solar panels emit. concern with solar farms is their location. Don't allow them to be built on prime farm ground. Have you heard the term bread basket of the world? You're sitting in the middle of it. Has it occurred to you the impact this will have on our food supply? My neighbors are not thinking clearly and certainly not thinking of those around them. They're not even thinking about what will happen to themselves. They could lose their ground through eminent domain. 
solar company sells the panels to a utility company. They turn around and take the ground right out from under them. Taking our tillable acreage to build solar farms is the most destructive option I have ever heard of. Not one of you have done your research. What's the plan if the panels catch fire? The plan is to just let it burn itself out because you can't put it out. The more intelligent thing to do is the city of Marion and others like it should clean up their blighted areas, build solar panels there, then the city can use the power created instead of it being hooked up to the grid and sent to who knows where. Build them beside the distribution centers. Let them use the power. Those who have made this bad choice with their land should consider other options, such as growing hemp. Hemp can be used in many ways, has many uses, and it's not going to poison us. They should consider making investments into building a hemp processing plant. They want money in their pockets, then hemp is the way to go. If these solar farms are built and my property value goes down, and it will, I will file suit. I will regularly check my water supply, and the day I find it tainted, I will file suit. Might as well put your fork down, because there's no food on your plate. Thank you. Any discussion or concerns? As far as the noise, we did address that within our draft ordinance. If you read through our draft ordinance to date, um, there are decibel levels that have to be met at the property line, if I recall. So, like, I don't know if you were standing right next to what we're admitting that, it should be far enough away from a property line that it does not go over a certain decibel at the property line. So, there are, at least in our draft, concerns about noise, okay, within our draft. All right, somebody else? Looks like we got somebody willing to come up. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Don Everett, um, members and citizens of Grant County. Uh, I'll get my name down there. Uh, I think most people standing behind me here and first of all, I want to say the address system is very bad. We have, I know we can't meet in the council chamber, but we do need to, if we're going to have meetings, we need to get a better address system so we can hear back. But anyhow, the people here, I want to address some issues with the solar situation. It's more complex than I think we just think it is. The first thing that comes to my mind, like I think we can understand this, is the water drainage. What, you know, when you've got a solar panel, you get your water shut off. It's got to go somewhere. Now, I was talking to a gentleman back here, Mr. Hoda. He'd been up around Tiffany County. And we've had a lot of rain. Our weather climate has changed. <clears throat> I live over in Southern Grand County. And our drainage ditches are working hard. Let alone we, wherever they put these solar farms in, the water's got to go someplace. And all it ends up going down the creeks and ends up in the Seminole River. So, this is something we have to. And it would be retention ponds or whatever. We still the water is going to be there. And the ground is not going to absorb. So we've got a situation there. The next thing I want to bring up <clears throat> is converting solar energy, electric energy, into AC power to get in the grid. Now, <clears throat> this power has to come from the sun to a solar panel and go into some kind of a device, an inverter, and then get into the grid. Well, I got concerned about these inverters, the cancer material that could be in the carcinogens and what we have. PCBs used to be a big tool to talk about. We don't know about these things. So, to make a long story short, the people here, I'm worried about my property values and your property values. If I saw jobs and things coming into Grant County that would be an influx, I'm all for it, right for Grant County. That's what it's all about. But what I see is actually a nemesis possibly on my doorsteps. And I'm afraid what we'll see is a tax rate to come along, and these people just want to build a solar system. They're in it for a while, and that thing will be sold off. And the energy ain't going to be Grant County. If, if I can see the energy from factories and business and boom, 
and cheap energy prices. No, it's going to be shipped off to the East Coast somewhere. We're not going to get in that. We've got precious farm ground out there. It's going to be tied up in this. And I just think it needs a lot of consideration. And I do think the people did show up. I don't know how the letters get generated to people like myself. Uh, I don't know how they come. I don't understand that. But I, I can really put them out. And uh, I want everybody to rate this hard and long. Thank you for your time. So as far as drainage, I don't know if we specifically spelled out drainage issues, but we do have uh, the drainage board will review because um, they are concerned about it through installation that they field tiles and things like that. Um, hopefully a lot of that's mapped out. They can build with that in mind. But if they were to hit a field tile, even an unknown field tile, they're supposed to repair the field tile so that the drainage for that particular field continue to work as it was continue to work. Now well I don't I don't know. Um, does it create more uh, flooding, so to speak, or standing water that's going to be more of a runoff. If I'm not mistaken, they're not supposed to have gravel under this. It's supposed to be just dirt and we, grasses. We, we will have this, this will go through the drainage board. The drainage, it does not move forward without drainage board approval. It will also go through erosion control and we'll find that will not move forward without approval for that meeting. So those, those are actually in the ordinance that they have to be approved by those organizations prior to moving forward in the development. So you would, you would actually, if there was concerns on certain locations or certain developments, you would have those opportunities to talk at those meetings of your concerns on top of public hearings that we would have. So, you know, again, there, the drainage board is developing uh, on their end of it, a checklist of what they want to see uh, and what they'll approve. But that is in the ordinance. Right. Next. Don't be shy. Come on up. Can we ask questions? Yeah. Well, we'll try to answer as best we can. Come up here and sign in. <coughs> Randy Atkins, 8560 South Wheeling Pike. Paramount, Indiana. I guess, you know, I'm coming into this late, even though I did receive a uh, note in my mailbox asking if I had an interest in being part of the solar field by the company that's generating this. I guess my question to you folks, number one, I don't know what the process is to get it approved or to get it stopped. Anybody like to share that with me? Well, right now, our current, what our current rules are. Uh -huh. So, so right, right now, we're, you know, again, we're we're working on an ordinance. We we have uh, different ways that we're proposing uh, to do it. Currently, it right now, currently in Grant County, uh, solar farms are considered a utility by the land use table, which is allowed by special exception in every zoning grant. So by special exception approved by who? The Board of Zoning Appeals. And that and board is here? That the people yeah. that live before us. That was the meeting. Okay. okay. Uh, we have proposals of the development process to the area plan, the area plan commission, to the commissioners of the legislative bodies of the areas of towns. Uh, right now, the recommended proposal will be to go from the area plan office to the area plan commission for a rezoning into a special land use, then to the commissioners uh, to approve the rezoning and put forth a recommendation to the BZA for, again, a special exception. And the BZA is who we met with originally? That was the first meeting. Okay. What benefit does this board feel that Grant County is going to receive from having solar panels over this prime farmland that has the potential to impact every property owner that's not receiving a check from the utility company. Only thing that I ever heard, we would get fed off the corn how long it takes them to build it, that it would put good working jobs in this county. 
and you don't believe that those will be subcontracted out by whatever company comes in with the lowest bid that could be from any state true. who are in here during the building process that and away they go. Yeah, that could be true. Okay. Um, I guess economic wise, yes, they're, they're very minimal jobs because once it's built, it does not take very many people to make that. So as far as job creator, you almost got to say I heard no. it's goats and sheep maintained. What's that? Well, well, they still got them. We, we would actually have part of the development process would be a maintenance plan in place prior to getting developed. And so, so, so we've got, they would present to us through the Purdue scorecard, uh, vegetation management plan, uh, something like that, that, that would go through their buffers and their grasses. So we would, we would have that in place plus a maintenance plan as part of the development. So as far as jobs, let's say minimal, what it would do would be uh, hopefully reduce property taxes for all Grant County. Because you're putting these multi-million dollar investments in on the land, <coughs> and be taxed higher than they currently are. They've got a higher tax coming out of that, but it'll be less tax coming out of the rest of the pool. So that is one way. So it's that. not tax abated to where they're. Uh, our board would not do tax abated. We are not in charge of tax abated. How's it going to That impact? would be that would be the county council is in charge of anything financial like that. So if a solar farm comes in and says we want to do this and this. Can you help us out with the tax pay? That would go through the county council. Yeah. Um, I talked to one gentleman on there, and he told me he did not see that happening. That's today. What will be down the road? I don't know. Um, I don't. I don't think they would give an abatement, in my opinion, because it's not creating jobs. You know, it's a one-time investment, and you know. So I would hope they would not do an abatement of any type. Because why? Because we're not getting, you know, jobs done. Who pays the property taxes? What impact is it going to have on our school system? We all know farmers have carried school systems for ever in rural communities. Well, like I say, the value of that land where they, where they are installed, the value should go up. So that would be paid for. So the landowner. I don't know how that technically works because the farmer, from my understanding, is leasing. So I don't know if the bill will still come to the landowner and through his agreement with uh, whoever the developer is, how they get paid, how the bills get paid. That's uh, and, and one, one of the biggest points with this, the questions you're asking. Again, currently, right now, it is allowed through special exception through the BZA with zero regulation, no orders, no orders. Thank we currently you. have four solar farms in Grant County, two of which, Madison Grant and Oak Hill, didn't go through anyone. ADP and Gas City's first solar farm went through our BZA and were approved, but we've got zero regulations. There Are they no anywhere the, the, near the magnitude that's being proposed here? Uh, what we currently have, no, it does not sound like it. Well, we, we've got a Because if, if you are looking at my breakfast kitchen table and I look out of my window I enjoy the view I can see I-69 I can see interstate or um, state road 26 I can see wheeling pipe the the panels are going to shut my view down from my home with the acres that are being proposed by the two individuals who are the primary landowners who are going to benefit from this and i'm just one of the neighborhood people who are here and all the i'm going to do i'm going to ask this board who's going to make this decision that's going to impact most of the people in this room whether the benefit that we are anticipating temporary construction for a period of time and then away they go is going to impact the rest of us who are living there. And I think 
Sir, I think you're talking about an individual project, project for development. We are just trying to get an ordinance in place so I'm that talking, they can regulate. Right, I'm talking about the number of acres. I, I understand that. That are that yeah. are going to concentrate this community of these people who are sitting in this room. Right. I'm asking this board to take consideration of the impact that it's going to have. So right now, if we have no ordinance in place, mm -hmm. that same development, if it's passed through the BZA, has no regulations. There is no emergency plan, no decommission plan, there is no maintenance, there is no erosion Sometimes control, there's no drainage. drainage, there's nothing. If they are approved right now. Please do something. That's, well, that's, that's what we're trying please. To that's what we're trying to do. Okay. We're trying to look at it. See what's best for the homeowners near it. What's best if they do come in. We can regulate it, just like Brian's saying. They can come in right now, and we have no say so. Okay. So you and the homeowner next door, we can't go in protect you. That's why we're trying to get this ordinance where we can protect the people in the county and, that's, that is and the protect ourselves. That's what I want to hear from you. We we know there are five or six companies out there. We know Henry and Rush County just built. We know Madison County that just got out of the Supreme Court and is moving forward. We know Delaware County has two coming. We know Jay County has two coming. We know Howard County uh, just had one tonight, I believe. And we know Gas City just started their second. So they are out there. They are around us. They're here. Either we get together and put together an ordinance and my guess is those companies are going to target the counties who don't have their stuff together. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. You all know who I am, but I'm Ted Hartman with the BCA. Okay, one of the things that uh, wanted to talk about a little bit was one that we get a good consultant to look this over help us with it make sure we're not missing anything so that we don't regret it later uh, I'd also like to uh, put up a consideration that we're looking hard at the property taxes on this as a, a big game for the county that's, that's what we've been here millions of dollars over the 30 35 years. So I don't want to see us lose that. That's one of the main justifications for even possibly doing it. I think we need to put in our ordinance a provision that demands that property taxes can't be set aside if the solar farm is sold off to a utility or anybody else. As we know, if it's sold off to a utility, public utility doesn't pay property tax. Okay? We need to make sure that we get our property taxes and it's for the full time period. If they shut this thing down 10 years early or something like that, they owe the full commitment. I think we need that put in there. Uh, increase the decommissioning bond to make sure that these panels are salvaged. Salvage is a lot more expensive. No, I mean recycle. Sorry. Salvage is you take out what's useful and you dump the rest. When you hear it being a you know, a shipwreck salvage. They go out, find the shipwreck, get out what's valuable. The ship stays at the bottom of the ocean. Same thing here. If you let them salvage the solar farm at the end, they take out the good scrap metal and they dump the panels. There'll be millions of those in this country to get dumped. Okay, so they need to be recycled. And the cost of recycling right now we need to check that out carefully, but it could be as much as $30 a pan. It's, it's expensive. There's only one company right now in the U.S. doing that. That's called First Solar. There'll be more. But anyway, a bond that is set up to cover the large cost is what we need in the ordinance. Okay? That needs to be checked out. And we also probably need to add a fee for an annual inspection by someone on Ryan's team or an outside inspector. And so, at the fee based on what you think it costs. Okay, 
it's thousand dollars. I don't know. Just something to cover the cost of the annual fee. Okay, there was some points brought up on the last uh, email from Ryan, and uh, in a zoning ordinance, one of the uh, things in the code, IC 36746.03, in preparing and considering the plan commission and the legislative body shall make reasonable regard to the comprehensive plan, current conditions and character of current structures in each district, the most desirable use for which land in each district is adapted. What's the best use for farmland? Okay. The conservation of property values throughout the jurisdiction and the responsible development and growth. So protecting property values. These are requirements of uh, a solar ordinance. So we, we need to, it's in the law, we need to carefully try and follow that. Uh, another thing from the Indiana Planning Association. Primary objectives of general welfare include protection of property values, lower public costs, and enhancing the livability of residential neighborhoods. Okay, and that is for an ordinance. So we need to consider that as well, that, that we make every provision we can to have a good solar ordinance that protects our people. You know, that's first and foremost. Uh, so we, we have a recommendation that the APC do a rezoning, then pass it to the commissioners, and then pass it to the BZA. And we've talked about that could be the most thorough review process that we could probably set up. It's not just one group making the decision. All of us, including the commissioners and both boards, we make that decision. Now, property value guaranteed, that's something that we need to protect the property owners. Now, we can hear from various studies that there is no detrimental effect to living next to a solar farm. But we don't really believe that. We think that will be a detriment to your property value. And uh, so we need to be careful with the decommissioning plan wording, that we've got that all covered. And we wanted a guarantee of no slave labor in the manufacture of these solar panels. I like Myron Brankel's suggestion best. Buy American solar panels, and you don't have to worry about it. Uh, I don't think any of us want to worry about promoting countries like China that have slaves. We all understand slaves, the Uyghur Muslims are enslaved in China. We've heard it, we know it also happens to be in Providence, where some of these panels are built. Okay, and uh, we also talked about a little bit, okay, we have a 1,320-foot recommended setback from the homeowner's house to the solar panels, which happens to be about a quarter of a mile. Now, Ryan sent out a picture of how far we would have to be to get 1,320 feet. And it was like, okay, here's a square mile of farmland, and there are houses around the complete perimeter. So it'd have to be 1,320 feet from every side. And he calculated that brought it down to 308 acres. Now, what are we hearing from the solar farms? It's been all over the place. Last meeting, Tom, I can't remember his last year. Sure. Schroeder, right? He said, we need at least three or 400 acres. Okay, in the center of this, in the center of that square mile would be 308 acres. We also need a little access road right to the middle. Quarter mile strips around the entire thing, which could still be farmed. We also heard, but we'd have to, we'd have to lease a whole lot more land if you restrict us to 1,320 foot setbacks. I believe 
No, you don't. You got to lease that center square of 308 acres. You don't have to lease the whole quarter mile. And if you need 600 or 900, that would be three square miles that you'd be looking at, and you'd have to link them together. So there's ways, there's possibilities around having a large setback. It's not an end of the process. It's not like they say, you do that, we're leaving. They could still leave and go find it elsewhere easier, but it's not like it can't happen. 300 acre solar farm, close to 400 megawatts, possibly. If it's all used. Most, most of what they're projecting are a thousand acres. Right, and if you put three of those together, you've got close to your thousand acres. And, and the other, the other point on 1320, there's only other one other county in the state that is at 1320. That's right. And, and in talking to their directors since that ordinance has passed, there has yet to be any solar development in this county. And there's a lot of solar development not being done in any county. And, and there's a lot of wind. Ten, ten that's currently in the I mean, right now. In our area. How many counties totally have outlawed wind? Well, we it's about 30, back. right? With, with wind, we fall back to the state because the state ordinances want to include wind too. So, in other words, just because you put in some restrictions they don't like doesn't mean they're going to go to other counties and cherry pick them first. But, you know. We still have some locations. They're probably after because the grid comes right through Grant County. So they may be back. Even if we don't get the first win, they may be back. And besides that, sometimes the guy who gets it first regrets it later. We can watch some of the other problems as we go along and try not to make those same mistakes. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Up. I'm still Linda Norton. <laughs> um, I just had a couple of things that jumped out at me. Um, first of all, the Star Press said that uh, the bill that they were working on in the state uh, may have died in the Indiana Senate. So it died last year. Last, last year. year. Last year. And they're bringing it back. Uh, they could okay. come back. Could That's what we back. don't know. It could, and then it could fail again, or it could pass. And usually in election year, bills like this will lag dead on the Senate floor. Because mm -hmm. I'm an IVFA, Indiana. We try to put stuff through during election year. They will not touch stuff because they don't want to run their name. Oh, I don't know it, maybe. Okay. They want to make the public happy during election year. So it probably nothing will happen this year. Starting in January from now, you might see it come out fast. That's, that's the catch point, too. There's a pretty good chance it will not happen. But if it does, we don't have an ordinance in place. Then yeah. We have to follow the rules. Don't get stuck with your pants then. Okay, the other the other thing that's really bothering me is a lot of the wording in some of these. Um, they're calling the properties economic revitalization areas. And it's my understanding that's like junk land. And I'm pretty sure the farmland is not junk land. Um, and are they going to base any reimbursement on, well, this is junk land. So we need and, to- And you're, you're falling back to the actual development, the actual location. Well, so it, it's hard to throw a blanket over everything. I know. You don't know exactly what's going on. I know, but I'm, I was thinking there was something in there in the ordinance about vacant land or, because it's not vacant. It's not vacant land, there's nothing in there. Okay. Well, that's something you might want to make sure about to avoid them saying, well, it's only this value and it's actually this value. That was it. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
Anybody else? And, and Linda, thank you for that email. What? Thank you for that email. <laughs> got somebody else? Anybody else? There you go. Jason Lloyd. Do you guys know off the top of your head what you have for setbacks and restrictions for CAFA or Hallmark? You think you know that? You can double it over the years. Yeah, so. I'd, I'd have, have to, to get the book down. Do yeah. what? I'd have to get the book down. Around off the top of your head? I mean, they've been turned down, so I know right. it kind of sticks in the head. It's not something that's far fetched to throw a number out. It's 1320 for a dump. 1320 per dump. Yeah. So, kind of what we're looking at isn't something crazy. I mean, that's agricultural related for a hog barn. Mm -hmm. Us as a county is kind of few on the way. So, I guess when you're thinking about ordinances, you know, fair is fair when you're looking at things just because uh, I know a hog barn generates tax revenue. So, you know, that's what we're looking at to try to raise the county more money. <coughs> Everything just needs to be treated fair. And we're looking at stipulations and setbacks and all that. So that's all I got to say. And it, to, to speak to that, we, we've kind of talked about it in several workshops. We had originally opposed, proposed 250 as right. a setback. We took 32 counties, 32 counties was 228. Uh, our current proposal is 1320. Uh, the state, again, we kind of did some comparisons to the state. The state's ordinance for last year was 150. For off barns or no, for, for, for sold? No, for sold. Mm -hmm. But some counties have a lot more off barns than what we've been in the areas. But I'm saying we just kind of have a, a different standard for what's coming in. Right. But yeah? Chuck, I'd like to say something. Yeah. We said earlier. The lady said about fires that, yeah, you cannot put them out. And the reason you can't put them out is because this panel's on fire. This panel looks like it's good. They told me when I went into the fire meeting on this one on IM with AP that wires from this one burning like hit the other one. So the only thing firemen can do is call an 800 num number. And 90% of the time, the people don't do the works on these, don't live around here, or two or three hours away. I can tell you right now, Lincoln Boulevard, a couple years ago, two guys that took care of where I am, St. Joe, Michigan, South Bend. So you call the 800 number and you sit back and wait on them. Well, that you know. Well, we are going to have the fire and emergency program. Bob Jackson. Oh yeah, I know here. that. Uh, and I just let them know that. Yeah, to, to actually, we are going to have. If these developments come in, uh, we will have yearly training. Yeah. Uh, if that that will pay, be paid for by the solar company. In yeah, that case, should that farmers happen. can't do nothing. You know, to try to put water on it, you're gonna get hurt. And that's the same if a car was to run into there. They they're they're going to have keys, keys to get in. Have to turn it down. That's what we've been asking, and that's what we asked when we had the IMF one. Mm -hmm. How can we get in, shut certain things down if we need to get in there? How does get hurt? Right. And that's why when Ryan first asked that, he talked to me, and I told him call Bobby Jackson because he's a instructor for the state and he's our first minute direction. Mm -hmm. And Bobby Grace was. We need to have them like the pipeline group does every year for the fire department. They have to give an annual plan. <coughs> so that way any new firemen or old ones did get the right, you'll know up to date how to do something. All right. All right. Brian Glass. <coughs> I actually live right on the county line uh, in Gaston. I was at the uh, meeting this morning in Delaware County, and I just wanted to let you guys know that we appreciate the opportunity to speak. Uh, Delaware County will give you the opportunity to speak. We have a railroad through property owners. I just want you guys to keep in mind 
that any proposals that go through, before they go through, each and every property owner has the opportunity to have a list. We won't give them a list. So were they, were, they at a, were they actually having a hearing or a, uh, They put a little blurb in the Nazi paper that nobody takes mm -hmm. and nobody listens to and nobody reads. That was their legal and they're right. going to say that we, we, we can do about it. Mm -hmm. But there was no property owners. We're going to have guys that on three or four acres that have those surrounding on three and four sides. Their property value should be zero. They, they should have still had a public. They should have had a public announcement. There should have been a letter sent out to the yeah. property owners. Well, for for a public hearing, hearing, all adjacent property owners are required to be notified. I just want to make sure that gets done right. in respect for all the property owners, whatever happens. Yeah. We weren't. Yeah, you know, like, like he said, if I decide today, if I want a solar panel, I can decide to come in and say the farm behind you. You'd have to be notified that I'm coming in. None of us. None of us were notified. Zero. And they said it was zero. No, all swapping. In our world, we do that. Well, well, that's that's not like our rules. rules. That's state law. Yeah, they, 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 they ran railroad and right. They had a guy stand up here at Farm Zero, or on the Farm Zero board, and recommend 50 feet setback, and they put it into their ordinance. So you're saying it's state law? Public hearings. Yeah, I mean it's it is outlined as far as what we have to do, as far as notification, publication. It's, it's in the book. They, we do have the understanding that the, the small print of paper, they can do it It has, has to be publicated in a local municipality. I love the lawyers down here. So. <laughs> That's why you have so many people here because they're scared to death about what happened in Delaware County. We didn't have a voice. So we just want to make sure we get this right. But, he explained over there, this is a really big deal. 35 years is what a contract. We're a farm from 1795. It can take a whole generation of our family out of farm. We've got 600 acres that border what they're projecting down here. We won't be able to compete with other farm with guys getting money. Farm cash rent does not compete with solar cash rent. If she wants to get up here and talk, she can tell us what money's given her. We just, it's hearsay, but it's three times the amount of trying to farm. If we love what we do, it's a lifestyle. Just don't, make sure you guys have the rules in place and us to enjoy it a lot. That's all we ask. If the deal's too good to be true, there might be a problem with it later on. They're offering you $900,000 an acre to sign up. That's a lot of premium money farmland. There's got to be something wrong with the venture. And you talk about the one in Gas City. Uh, they sold it back to the power company. Yeah, it's already, so they were buying the electric. So yes, it's produced, but Gas City residents aren't really benefited from it because they're still buying it back from the utility. I think the only thing Gas City is trying to do is a few years ago when the big Companies like I am went to the state, and that's how they're doing all its remodeling now. They said the lower municipalities was hurt. So, like the new hospital and stuff, in Gas City probably will not be able to tax their utility into that. They'll have to take I and M with way state rules put to it. So, what Gas City is trying to do is, how can we keep our costs low? If I emphasize the rate, the bulk rate, we put the solar panel in and we're shipping it back, they pay us, how can we keep the cost down to our citizens? That's what they're trying to do with that. But it is going to local use. Yeah. It is going use. into any of these. When you put any yeah. of these. Same situation. I if it's going to go out to the grid and wherever I and M or Duke Energy mm -hmm. or any of these wants to take it, they can take it. We have no say yep. so. I, I do nothing about the second solar farm going in until I just have to be talking to the mayor about the solar ordinance and if they were interested in, in reading it in case they wanted to put something in place. That's how I found out. 
that it was it was going in. I I never got any notification or in the paper or anything else. It was saying it started well it started in December. All right, anybody else? I just have a question. Yes. Yeah. Is it possible <coughs> to put in your ordinance that you pass that it totally bans large solar farms? Well, you can yes, ban them, limit the size. at least limit the size. Mm -hmm. You can maybe just well, put the ordinance for small businesses. Well, with the setbacks. The city. But, well, with setbacks, hopefully with setbacks, we control to some extent. Mm -hmm. But I will say, we as a APC, Air Planning Commission, we are an advisory board basically to the county commissioners. It is our job to formulate the ordinance the best we can. And we actually do not pass it. We make a recommendation to adopt, not to adopt, or no recommendation at all. And it will go to the commissioners. And they will either accept it or make changes. So we're doing the best we can, but it really will be the three commissioners that are going to make the final decision. So we're hopefully we make a craft a good ordinance and reasons why we're putting a particular setback in or things like that carry enough weight that they don't change it or they understand the reason behind why we maybe did something compared to what the original draft started out to be. So we are trying to craft the best ordinance we can from all the input we're getting and we will make a recommendation to the county commission who will have the final say. Okay. And they have the obligation, from my understanding, they can make changes to it. So if we put in a quarter mile setback and say, no, we're not going to do with that, they could bring it back. They're the ones that could be making that decision. That's correct. So, we, but we need to make a good enough case or present or say, this is a lot, we're getting a lot of feedback on this. I do believe, as a whole, the county commissioners would like to see some of this developed. Just how responsible of our development we need to make sure it's responsible. There's also a, a step when they send it back with their changes, you guys will have the chance to look that over. And if you disagree, you can say, no, we really think this is what it should be, and you send it back to them again, at which time they can either sign it or change it the way they want it right. and sign it. And that'd be more there, in their There is a well. second step for right. you know, review, explanation. Yeah, I don't know exactly if that's correct, but hopefully we can. That's correct. That is correct. They won't go back and through. You can go back, make a modify, but the final stay will be with the uh, yeah. commission. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's the to the commissioners. When that yes. ordinance that you guys make is presented to the commissioners, is there representation from this board to help explain the lines? Or well, they? Ryan would be there. I mean, they're actually, uh, one of the members that are not here is a member of the commissioners. Mm -hmm. uh, Ron Mowry is not here tonight. He should be on this board, uh, or should be here tonight. So they are actually part of this. Um, they've been watching all of our meetings. We know they've been watching all the different workshops. So they are seeing some of the feedback. So. Mm -hmm. Maybe, hopefully, they are starting to understand maybe reason why some of these uh, changes from the first couple of drafts are happening or proposed. So, where it goes, we'll find out. We'll find out. So, something else that you should uh, make sure to put in your ordinance is the guarantee for companies that our property values will not go down. Um, I know there are some, I just handed some paperwork from the BCA, what they call, uh, we will look at that. I, you guys said that would go in last meeting. Right, yeah. that we would consider. So, if, if, if there's no, I mean, if I come roof your house, I give you a guarantee that's gonna make you let me roof your house. What's the difference for if she doesn't think that there's not a problem with putting this aside a $500,000 home, what's the big deal about the guarantee? I mean, to me, it's win-win for them. I mean, honestly, it is. I mean, if I offer guarantees, it, it should be the same with them. I, mean, I just don't see much difference. 
Yeah, and, I, and we'll know going again back to 1381, and I, I kind of said that out the town boards and ABC. And, and 1381, the voting from last year, we call that. Uh, and I brought it back. Paul calls it. <coughs> An unreasonable requirement. So that's that's what the state put forward and proposed for 1381. 1381 is the House bill or the state bill or whatever. That, that died, but it, that it died. Bas basically calls for uh, a property value property value guarantee. Uh, it says this again. This was not about this died. But just to give an idea of what the state's thought process is, it basically said a, a permit authority may not, uh, number two was a condition of approval of an application or a supplemented application upon a project owner's agreement to fulfill unreasonable requirements, including a property value guarantee. And that says that your property value will go down. It's, it's saying that, that the state's proposed ordinance from last year says that we can't put unreasonable. So you were, what made me think about it, you were talking about limiting size. I mean, this, this is basically, and again, not guaranteed, but if the state's ordinance does come through, it's going to say that the unit cannot put the restriction on. If that, if that language stays. Well, don't forget, we're trying to get this done before, before it passes the state. Right. Well, that so is, our that is the end, so we and we go possibly. by our bill, not theirs. And don't forget, their bill died. Right. right. Mm -hmm. The next one that comes us back might be a little better. We don't know. Yep. But that one died. Is that that might be part of the reason. Is there an online and the orphans is going to be presented to the commission? Well, first of all, once we get an ordinance that we want to present, We'll do a public hearing, kind of like what we did tonight with the uh, changing of the. So they would be advertised, public hearing where people could come in and state for and against uh, the ordinance, and then we would have discussion and we'd make a recommendation to the county commissioner of approved, not approved, or no recommendation at all. What kind of advertisement? Let us know. Well, it definitely would be in the paper. We don't read the paper. Yeah, I know, that's the problem. There's not a lot of circulation going on right now. I would think uh, as hot as this is, the word will get out. Uh, chronic, well, there's a Facebook and what is that? I don't think Facebook. Yeah, Facebook. Yeah, Facebook and Twitter. The county does not. Yeah. Does not have we do. If you, if you go to the county website, uh, if you go to the county website, scroll down departments, you can go to area plan. Uh, and it's easy enough to put it there. We do have uh, links to the YouTube or the other workshops and summit meetings are there. Uh, we've also got a copy of the draft of the solar there. So it would be, I mean, we, we can put that there also. That would be awesome. Thank you. <coughs> well, she's, she's yeah. here, so. Yeah, I do it all. I make sure it updates. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have something else? Yeah. Well, we'll find you. What I'd like to say is this, that we want to make sure, in Louisiana, that we do what the people want, not what good for business. So if you feel like that it's good for business, you can match your thing, no problem with that. But just think about it. If you own property, you have children, this is generational thing. So give that a good thought because sometimes money is not everything. And you can't eat those well. How fair we are. <laughs> so, All right. just, just, take a, just take a good thought about that. Before you, because we're going to make sure that we put in as many things as we can think of in these services to make sure that this is the right thing to do. And we're not going to rush into it. We're not going to hurry. You know, if business is coming, say they don't want to wait. See you next time. You'll be back. There's a lot of solar places that.
come from all over the world. So just to thank these few that they mentioned that these are the only people, they're not. And they are looking for towns like Mary. They know that. This isn't for the town, Mary. It's for the county. For the, either way, yeah. the county, either way. The they county see, and the mayor. They see these people come, they see them go. So don't give them the impression that, well, if they don't come, they're not going to bring jobs here. If they were bringing jobs here, that would be different. But they're not bringing anything here at that. Oh. All right, anybody else before we wrap it up here? Anybody else coming? Okay. Anybody else coming up here? Last time you had a meeting, I appreciate, thank you very much for continuing the discussion tonight, even though it wasn't on the agenda, so I really appreciate your time and patience on that. I am a licensed real estate broker 14 years. I'm a member of my board, served on the Madison County BZA for a year, and I currently serve as the county extension appointment to our planning commission now. Madison County is under moratorium on solar farms. We are in the process, of, just like you, of drafting our ordinance. And um, hope to present that January 11th at the Alexandria Fairgrounds between 6 and 8 p.m. I would invite all of you to come. Maybe you can learn some things there. I think it would be a great informational meeting. Um, right off the bat, I am always give my disclaimer. I'm not an attorney. I'm not giving you legal advice. I'm representing and repeating um, different uh, professional organizations. Um, not representing, but repeating professional organizations like American Farm Land Trust, American Farming Association, professors of agronomy, <coughs> soil scientists, different universities, MAI designated appraisers, and more. My education is for three years going on now, um, as Madison County has been um, in this solar farm issue for three years. Last time I was here, I received a lot of questions from some members of your planning that have called me, um, the BZA, the different community, and different people in your community. So in no specific order, I'm going to answer some of these questions. Do I have a copy of my speech that I gave last time I was here because the meeting video had glitches and I wasn't recorded? No, I spoke completely by memory, except for pulling up certain quotes on my computer from attorneys, American Farmland Trust, and professors. Um, but I did bring copies tonight um, of all, all these studies, maps, and more, and I submit these to you as part of your hearing um, to go into your record as far as your minutes. And I suggest all here make copies and pass them out and read them. And um, uh, so I brought all that information. I did email the Madison County Solar Binder to certain people who've asked. I may have missed emails, so if you don't have it, give me your email address and I will send that to you. Um, can, one, can, can I real? Yes. We, we were able to open, at least those in the county that we were able to open the Madison County ordinance, the, your proposal for the ordinance. Yes. Your other email, we could not open. Okay. So, um, just maybe, to, just to make yeah, so maybe I need individual emails. I don't know if it's a county thing or security, I'm not sure, but um, you know, try and get that information to you. Um, one of the questions I get is why is there a lack of attendance at informational meetings because no one's showing up regarding the solar farm concerns. Um, in our county, we didn't realize about the solar farm for like about 30 or maybe it's about 60 days that a rumor kind of went through. Proper notification should be placed in any ordinance that when a solar developer comes into and starts to, to, to sign solar leases, when they get those leases signed or they're talking about wanting to plan a project in your county, I believe they should come to your planning department very first thing, even before signing up leases, and start discussing that. And they um, you know, should hold some informational meetings in the county to, to bring all of the public attention aware. Um, we are we're drafting our ordinance that they must hold two public meetings and actually send out within one mile to all homeowners involved in that area so they have certified receipt of confirmation notification. Um, solar developers you know, are, are lacking transparency in, in their projects and what they're planning to do. So proper notification is important and once you start surrounding small towns and you watch, you'll watch these meetings grow in attendance because people aren't aware and they're not watching their papers. Another question, has any attorneys right now gave legal advice yet on eminent domain and um, these companies becoming utility providers or selling the project to a public utility? 
and the December 14th meeting in Madison County, I expressed my concerns because of the prior legal advice given by attorney for the citizens who opposed the project. I asked our claim director and our county attorney to look into this and give us legal counsel on it. I've also reached out to another attorney for review, and I'm waiting to hear back from that response. But the last time I was here, I quoted a section of that report by attorney Terry Hall, and she said this in regards to the petitioner, which was in energy, and she said this. I'm going to read this verbatim. The petitioner's asserted economic benefits may be illusory, as stated, and do not necessarily support the general welfare of the community. The petitioner has made a series of assertions, assertions sorry, with respect to the economic benefits to the county from the project as a, as a reason to approve these petitions. The calculations underlying the assertions have not been publicly disclosed, so it is difficult to determine if the amounts as stated would be, in fact, correct. However, even assuming them as true, the economic benefit analysis fails to take into consideration what economic benefits the project will displace. The petitioner has stated that the project represents a $110 million investment in Madison County, and this investment is expected to generate an estimated $60 million in economic benefits split between income to participating landowners and additional property taxes. The specific amounts attributed to each benefit is not known with any certainty. Assuming, based on payments usually received on these kinds of leases, the payments to landowners and the increased property tax revenues are likely to be $33 million and $27 million respectively. The, the assertion that both of these are new and permanent benefits to the county is suspect. First, because this project is displacing an existing economic producing industry. The payments to landowners are not new, but simply replace the lost benefits from the agricultural activity. Indeed, given that farming has an economic multiplier effect and that it actively spends and supports other businesses while the project will be a passive economic business actor, the economic benefit is either a wash or will in fact be less than what is currently being generated. Moreover, the change in land use from an active local enterprise to an investment property where profits will be upstreamed to an out-of-state parent company, the project may result in more land being owned by out-of-state residents, and if this occurs, tax revenues based on payments to landowners will not be taxed in Madison County, but rather in the do domicile district of the landowner. Second, while it is true that the installation of solar equipment will result in new assessed value and tax receipts, it's not necessarily true that the expected tax, re tax receipts will continue or remain at the same level. First, the petitioner states that the project may be sold in whole or in parts to public utilities. If the project is sold to a governmentally owned utility, the solar equipment is now exempt from taxation. Secondly, there are transactions which can act to reduce the assessed value, and thus the tax receipts, including but not limited to sale and leaseback transactions, multiple sales, perhaps for a related party and back, where the fair market value is reset in each sale and with each sale, and some financing transactions that may result in reduced values and corresponding reduced tax receipts. All of these transactions are legal and not foreclosed in the petitioner's application. The petitioner has not made any assurances that this new tax income is permanent or that it may not be significantly reduced over time without conditions placed on these transactions that could reduce the asserted tax benefit or approval of these petitions on the basis of level is estimated and lifetime taxes is not warranted. Also included in this documentation here is an explanation of Indiana Code 36728 from Indiana lawmakers who actually drafted and wrote the law. A group of uh, citizens in Shelby County reached out because Hoosiers throughout the state are being told that their counties cannot restrict renewables or even ban them. According to these lawmakers, this is not true and at the December meeting in Madison County, our attorney also affirmed that counties can do whatever they want regarding allowing, restricting, or placing new conditions on renewables. I asked him to please make that aware of our January 11th meeting coming up. I've, asked about, I've been asked about property value guarantees, and it was said that some planning directors are saying that these cannot be done. I was informed, I want to inform you that Cascioso County and Franklin County have enacted them. I've been contacted by the Tipton County Attorney for their County Commission in BZA, and he's looking into what he can do, can do to protect their county. I also spoke with the Henry County Commissioner today to validate what happened there. Henry <coughs> County has outright banned further solar installations that will, be, that will go to transmission lines. Those are her words. Solar installations that will go to transmission lines. Uh, Bellflower Solar was passed in Henry County. I believe that was in 2020, um, and if you aren't aware, Politics completely changed in the past five years in Henry County. The citizens fought a turbine project down there and defeated it, and they stopped. They stopped that. Um, the citizens took back the county government, the county council, the commissioners, 
um, all running on no wind tickets and um, because the majority needed to rule in that county and that's what they decided they wanted. The, commis the commissioners um, only took office, I believe it was January 1st, 2021, but prior, right before taking office, uh, the planning commission passed a bellflower solar. And um, I was told today that regardless of what the planning commission did on the property values, that, um, that new commission board that took over actually put a property value guarantee on that development post approval. I thought that was interesting, so I just wanted to let you know that. Yeah. Henry County. So um, I also want to explain to you what happened in Madison County in 2019 regarding <coughs> this property value guarantee. So when Invenergy applied and came before our BZA, we had three yes votes and two no. One of the no members stood up and he said, look, I've done my own research. He said, I contacted um, several real estate brokers and appraisers and he said they all thought this was going to injure property values. So he said, I took this a little bit further. He said, I decided to start calling some banks. And I really stood up about that and I said, well, that's ingenious. I didn't think about that. He said, I called these banks, he said, and I asked them, would they keep this note on their books if they would, would they go on a house being surrounded by a solar farm? And the, they told him that they thought there would be marketability issues, they wouldn't want to loan on a house with solar. And so he said, I give you today all these people in the audience, what are they going to do if they can't even sell their homes? I want a property value guarantee placed on this condition, because I want this condition placed in there. And um, now mind you, understand that our ordinance that we had at the time was based on small scale solar. Our planning director will tell you that it was the IMPA projects where they got their first ordinance. So it was very, very weak. It didn't have a property value guarantee. The setbacks were really bad. It was based on small-scale solar. And Venergy's attorney actually admitted it. He said, everybody knows this, this ordinance is horrible on the setbacks and, and, and the property values. We understand that. But he said, this is the ordinance we have to deal with. And um, the BZA gave us, the one thing they did do was put a 500-foot setback. Um, they ignored the ordinance, they can do what they want, they put that condition on there, they gave the citizens a 500 foot setback, which we were very, very grateful for. But realizing, you know, this, this issue with impacted to values was huge. And um, what this BZA member investigated was certainly um, huge, and I actually have contacted banks now, I've contacted three, and I got one of them in writing, which is in that binder from First National Bank underwriters that agreed, they're, they're, you know, they would have to talk to appraisers. But they agreed that there could be impacts to the values. They wouldn't want to keep them low. They would not pass through their underwriters. I think that's huge to really think about that. So um, what our attorney had said, uh, they gave that condition of the 500-foot setback, but he went back to, you know, this unreasonable thing. This could, I don't know what a judge would say. Maybe he would say it's unreasonable. Maybe he wouldn't. But this could cause a liability of being of a lawsuit. And then Venergy's attorney was sitting down there in the video shaking her head. Yes, yes, we're going to sue you. We're going to sue you. And I was told that by a BZA member, that he was told by another BZA member, you have to vote yes for this project or we're going to be sued. And now's your time to develop a better ordinance. Um, now's your time to do this. And are you going to protect people of your county or are you going to bend to an outsider who wants what they want? So I thought it was really interesting what those county commissioners did in Henry County to protect their citizens. I also want to address House Bill 1381. I've heard you talk about that. Um, Holcomb's Energy Task Force, um, I support Hoosiers for Home Rule, Hoosiers for Responsible Solar. I've been down there at that state house, I've testified. I can tell you firsthand, the legislators that came up and talked to me had no clue homes were being surrounded on all four sides. It was said of that bill, this was nothing but a love letter to renewables. There was no education opposition given until the bill came out. So when they had this task force development, they called in all the renewable energy companies. Well, if you don't have someone like me who wants to play, you know, devil's advocate here and let's talk about the other side, you know, to let's be responsible. I mean, this was just this was just crazy. This is down to the counties to protect your people. Um, and one of the other things that I thought was very, very interesting when House Bill 1381 was defeated last year, very shortly after that, the Ohio government passed Senate Bill 54. What Ohio had done in prior years was what Indiana's government, the state, was trying to attempt to take all of the local control away. Ohio had already done that, from my understanding, and it was all at the state level. Well, guess what? Lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit. And I don't know exactly what all those lawsuits were about. I'm sure some of them may have been property values and taking the farmland and so forth, but they had had enough. They drafted Senate Bill 54 and gave local control back to counties on site. You look it up because that's really big. So. Um, I thought that was important to mention. I got to mention. 
I got another question. What do you think about the commissioners taking the power away from the BZA in Grant County to pass or deny these projects? I don't understand what's happening here, but I can say to this, in the Indiana Citizens Planner Guide in Chapter 2, BZA Basics, there are Indiana state laws that are placed on BZAs. So I devoured my book, um, you know, when I got placed on the BZA. I sat for four hours with my plane director, you know, wanting to have education to make wise decisions. What I read in there is that a BZA is a quasi-governmental board. They're like judges. I'm not an attorney, and I'm not giving legal advice here, but I'd want to know if I was a citizen of Grant County, are the commissioners under these same laws, are they required to do the same things as a BZA? I mean, does the commissioners have to find findings of facts for a special use? Are they going to answer the same things um, that a plan or BZA would do? I don't know. But do, do commissioners attend you know, the classes? I, mean, I did some zoning classes. Are they considered zoning experts? That's what you all are here for. You know, not the, the commissioner's board. I don't know, but I'm just saying, do commissioners have to do this? Um, what is their education? Uh, do laws require commissioners to make these same findings of facts and answer the questions regarding the projects, meeting the, the questions on applying a special use for health, welfare, safety, property values, and does it meet the comprehensive plan? I served for a year on our BZA and I'm currently on the county extension of Pointy on our planning. And when I read the Citizens Planner Guide in Chapter 2, BZA Basics, I do not see the word commissioner in this chapter. So the last thing I had on here was to tell you about the tax abatement. I heard someone over on this side say, well, I don't think it'd be passed because, you know, it's not bringing jobs. Um, I want you to know Madison County defeated the tax abatement for Invenergy in October 8, 2019. You can go in our county and watch that hearing. It actually was um, approved. They had to have two hearings to do this according to the law. It was full approved, unanimously voted yes in January of 2019, but because of all the legal battles and so forth that happened over the summer, the final vote came down on October 8th. And myself and a couple of our community members went, and I printed the 33-page law for every council member. And I went through it. And I said, I'm not an attorney. You got three of them sitting right here, and one of them was an energy's attorney. I said, the first thing I want to know is how can you grant a tax abatement when the word tenant, leasee, or leasor is not even mentioned in the 33-page law? Are you the attorney here for the county? Okay. Well, the word owner is mentioned 119 times. I don't even know if they can apply for abatement. I think they got to own the land. I don't know. I'm not an attorney. Ask them. No one mentioned that. Attorneys, none of them stood up to express that information or give an opinion on it. But then I went on to read the definition of an economic revitalization area, and I had all of my um, pumps, you know, for the land, you know, the comparison, the land sales, and then I took in Energy's real estate report from Michael Maru, I think it's page 45, and he talked about all the increase of the ag and how great it was and wonderful. And I said, which side of the mouth does Energy want to talk about today? Because before BZA, everything's great and wonderful, and this is going to increase property values in the land and so forth. But today, now they want you to declare this land as a defined ERA under Indiana law is land that has become undesirable for or impossible of normal development and occupancy because of the lack of development, cessation of growth, deterioration of improvements, or character of occupancy, age, obsolescence, substandard buildings, or other factors that have impaired values and prevent normal development of a property or use of property. It's the county council's job to go out and evaluate that, and they have to write up a description and place it in the assessor's office for the public to view, and they never did it. They never drafted maps. They had no clue they were job, what their job was to do under this. And not one single attorney that day stood up and answered any of these questions that I had. And before it was done, four members said, no, we're not passing this abatement, and it was stopped. Then the next thing Invenergy did was to get involved in Madison County politics, and they ran a negative campaign ad against two of our council members. And go on YouTube, type in Madison County Councilman Calls Out Big Solar, and watch that video of what the councilman had to say. And so, you know, here's all the documentation. And the last thing I said about um, the communities not knowing, this is the map of Lolo Solar in Massac County. And I think posters are great for visuals. I'm a visual learner. When I see it, it's impactful. Everything in red are homes. This is the little community of Dundee. That community calls themselves the epicenter of the solar farm. They're completely involved inside this solar farm. I don't know where the land parcels are that are signed up in, in Grant County, and I don't know if you all know either, but when they plan something like this, and you see all these homes surrounded on all four sides, four sides, there's multiple and three sides, all four sides in this entire community. Now, you have a lot of small towns in Grant County, Swayze and 
and Fairmount and you know, Fowlerton, I can't remember them all. But I guarantee you, if they get surrounded, you're going to have bigger meetings. And that's what happened in our county, too. So, okay. yeah. So, in this process, when this is happening, why did this not become a bigger issue for the development stage, for the review stage? Why did a red flag not go up at some point and someone say, hey, we're surrounding this town? We did. I did. A hundred times over, I did. And, um, you know, in the spring part of this, I, I gave even the real estate reports that um, Invitergy had reported, and I said, you show me in here a study where a house is surrounded on all four sides, and they couldn't do it. From my understanding from the BZA that have talked, the BZA members that have talked behind the scenes, you know, this is politics and corruption. Um, you know, many of the community, community members complained because one member of our commissioner's board has family that has signed up in the project. The county council member has family signed up in the project. You know, I'm not trying to make assumptions, but I mean, you explained to me why one BZA member said, hey, you're going to have to pass this project and we're going to get sued. And, um, and I told you last time, you know, review and get on the internet and, and look at the people, these businesses that you're going to shake hands and do business with, please. I'm begging you. I, I, I spoke to Brian. Brad. 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 Yeah. Newman. Newman. Yeah. Uh, I, I spoke to him at length about some of the issues and stuff and some of the property stuff that went on. Yeah. He seemed to think that the, the setback was put into place. To, to appease your development there, but that the commissioners would take it back to them. They might. I don't know. I can tell you right now, we're going to fight in politics and do the same thing Henry County did, because this isn't right. And to surround homeowners on all four sides is just horrible. Now, I will tell you this about Brad Newman, too. Brad Newman stood in a planning commission meeting. It was July or August. He drafted our first, our first ordinance draft. It was actually presented before I became a member on our planning commission. And in that meeting, public meeting, he said uh, he didn't want this on prime prime land. He told me in a private meeting, he said, I no longer believe that solar development preserves prime farm land to match our comprehensive plan. So he drafted the ordinance and um, he wrote and presented it. And when the planning, a couple of planning commission members said, you know, hey, uh, this is really going to limit the projects if we can't allow the farmland to be used. And he said, well, the old comprehensive plan says to protect the farmland, and so does the new. He said, that's why I was tasked to write this ordinance based on my education. And Brad and myself are the only two people, and I believe in Madison County, that have read every document, every study that we know. And Brad's done a good job writing it, but he's only a planning director. The people on the planning commission are going to have to discuss this and vote it. We've got some people that believe farmers and landowners have the right to do whatever they want with their land, regardless of this. But I can just tell you from my battle, <laughs> homeowners are not going to stand for this. We will appeal our set of values. Um, we will look at lawsuits, read chapter three, I think, in your planning, the Indiana Citizens Planning Guide. The chapter is called Avoiding Pitfalls. And it talks about unfair takings. And I can quote to Terry Hall in this document that she submitted to, to them, said this is a, um, un could be an unfair taking. She said this is a violation of our Fifth Amendment to the Constitution. It could result in an unfair taking lawsuits against your county. And when you go through all of these studies, um, and I didn't get a chance to even tell you any of the details of them, but the University of Texas study, I've got the, each one of these, actually here's a good one for you, Gasoline Farm and Land, about farmers and how agriculture will be affected. That's a really good one to read. But each one of these studies, there's um, the key finding facts here on each one, and there's so many situations that happen. Even in North Carolina, one whole sub subdivision appealed their assessed value and dropped at 30%. And, you know, the main thing that I have said over and over and over, <laughs> these are homes affected by much smaller megawatt on one side adjacently. Wait till this stuff surrounds you on all four sides. <laughs> Don't tell me it's going to completely devastate property values. And, you know, Clay, who has um, been commissioned by the state of of Kentucky to evaluate this has submitted. This is her submission to the state of Kentucky, and she gives she outlines all of this and talks about you know negative up to 28 percent in um, certain studies. On, and that was actually from North Star. They lost 600 and 20, over 600 thousand dollars in values there. All of these are laid out. There's a lot of them here, but 
I mean, I can tell you in Madison County, during the whole year of 2019, there was uh, 14 real estate brokers that testified, gave testimony to the BZA in statement and writing. I have those. Um, buyers walked away. We did have one uh, sale that happened, and it was a 16.5% decline, and the solar wasn't even there yet. They offered 117000 and appraised for 140. The, that homeowner came and testified saying they wasn't going to offer anymore. And the seller had been trying to sell it. I actually had statements from the real estate broker listing it. And he said he, he lost the listing, uh, couldn't get it sold, had people, buyers walk away over the solar. When, it, when we finally got the maps to find out where it was at, and then another agent took it and sold it and um, never disclosed. That's the other thing that's happening is not disclosing. You know, I can tell you I've been called by homeowners that are so ticked off up in uh, Henry, or not Henry, Howard County. A homeowner is selling for sale by owner. I've spoken to NAR about this. You know, what, what do homeowners do? Do they, and what do how are realtors supposed to advise this? And homeowners should disclose, but they're not required to. You know, if it actually didn't get noticed, if you didn't, on page two of a real estate sales disclosure, it says, have you received any quasi government notice from any um, government affecting the affecting property? And while they haven't got that notice, they can check no. And um, it hasn't been approved yet, it's just proposed, you know, so they sold their home to a buyer from Colorado, by owner, and uh, neighbors couldn't warn them. They bought it, closed, moved in, neighbors came down, brought them to the community, and guess what, your home's going to be surrounded on all four sides. And you, you talk about being so angry, they're, they're <coughs> seeking legal counsel. So, I mean, you know, it, it's, this is an issue that's happening, um, and uh, it did happen in Madison County, and Mr. Maroon's report, he had five homes that he listed in that report, and it was purposely put there to say, here's great, strong home sales. Um, and they said near the project. They weren't near. Every single home was affected. Two homes were affected on two or three sides. But anyways, when I looked at the closing dates of these homes, well, that was before we even knew. I looked at every homeowner. And I said, did you know your, your house right. is actually in the study? We're starting to drag off here. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, anyways, it's almost 9 o'clock. Thank they, you. Any, all those homeowners said they wouldn't have bought had they known. And two of them said they were going to sue their realtor for not telling them. So thank you. My prayers are with you. You have my phone number. Call me. It's I, I put my number here. And send me individual emails. I will make sure you get that by you. Okay, so as a uh, APC, do we need to do another solar workshop? Advice that we got enough information that we can file down to an ordinance to be reviewed, and updated draft and updated. Do we need to get a small group of us to review and get it out to us, the executive committee to review with Ryan? Put the things in. I know we agreed with a lot of different things. Get it out and get a copy out. So we have before the next meeting. Not that we have a public hearing, it's just where we're at today. We feel we need to do another one of these at workshop. Do we have enough? We've got a lot of information. <clears throat> I would think we have enough information. We don't need it. I would think maybe try to get the drop five and round it out yeah. and then back out to us yeah. for a total review. That'd be our goal to have that done before the next meeting, which would be February something. Now, now, again, remember kind of what I said now. When we get into this, other things that we're going to need to talk about with some of what we've put in place. Uh, a 1320 setback in most cases will engage any kind of minor commercial. So we need to figure out uh, this is this is one of the reasons as I got started into making the changes that we had talked about, it become a domino effect within the ordinance that we change this and this, which changes this, this and this. So I got a hold of Chuck and said, Well, what do you want me to do here? Uh, it, Doing some of the recommendations that we've got in place, we're going to change things that we haven't talked about. I guess it's my point. Mm -hmm. so yeah. no, that's that's what I'm I'm saying. We, no, no, no. What I'm saying is we would have to separate minor and major and do a lot of stuff. Which again, if we're trying to get to a public hearing to discuss, we're 
That would happen if I'm not playing it, right? You said you put them in. I think you really ought to put them in. If you needed a minor setback, because, yeah, minor setback for a small business or a school or something like that, it's a different situation. Yeah. And then the setback needs to be just developed for that. Well, that's what I'm saying is we get our small group, maybe the executive committee, right down. The point being, I put that together and raised it a bunch more questions. Well, let well, me sit down and see how feasible it is. I mean, with that group, a smaller group, really analyzing it. Yeah. See how we can it. To keep on track, can we split it out? Can we keep it together or? If not, and then get that uh, draft five completed up. Big. So I, I would say that that would be my recommendation. Try to get the executive committee to sit down and really go through it and get it up to where we're at, and then bring that completed copy draft a draft back. And yeah, Brian person. says it makes a lot of changes, and he can start deploying his ass for it and makes all the changes. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm gonna have to come through it because it's it's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, I, as I got into it, it was like, oh, well, that's gonna be change. It's it just okay. <coughs> All right. So maybe we'll have to figure out a good time to, for most of us to get together. I only ask that you put yourselves in our shoes as you work through this. It appears to be laborious for you. Are any of you impacted by solar panels in your company? Uh, we do not. We get, we got general ideas of where they're going to be. So yes, I'm nearby. Uh, we know where the major transmission lines run through the county. So if you're probably I don't know within a half a mile, a mile, I don't know of one of them, you're probably going to be affected or could be affected. So yes. So like, like I live out towards Sweetser, okay, there's one that runs out from behind the ethanol plant, and I've got it corners towards Swayze, and it crosses at 00 and 400 west. So... 600 acres within a mile and a half area? Uh, square mile, what did I look at? Square mile is... 648. Okay. Oh, so 600 acres of solar panels. Oh well, yeah. yeah. In yeah. one area. Yeah, over probably a couple square miles. We're not talking about right. backyard. We're talking about yep. solid solar panels. Yep. Solid solar panels. Yep. We're here. Yeah. We're right here. Yeah. We just hope we can make whatever efforts are necessary in order to protect the people that it's going to impact. That would be my request. All right. Any other business? A second, right? Motion. Uh, made a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.